All right. So my dear colleague Thomas will uh, give an overview of how to build uh, custom UI5 libraries, how to deploy them, how to use them. So let's go. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, hi, welcome to uh, this session. So in this session, I will explain how you can create your own UI5 library um, and how to deploy them to your launchpad. Uh, I will um, zoom into the launchpad on premise, but uh, more or less the same concepts apply to a, a launchpad in a new environment. I think in Cloud Foundry, it will be a little bit difficult, a little bit different, but uh, so in this session, I will focus on the on-premise launchpad. Maybe just a quick uh, question. Who of you is mainly working on Fiori applications on-premise, which you deploy on-premise? Okay, who is mainly working in cloud? Okay, so the, yeah, the biggest part is working on on-premise systems, so that's good <laughs> for this session at least. Um, I will not uh, explain how to create custom controls. I will really expl just explain the library part because we only have 20 minutes. Okay, so why did I choose this topic? Um, so in a recent project, we uh, created applications for uh, warehouse operators, uh, applications that are, you, uh, that are run on a, a scanner device. And uh, the applications, uh, were it was a total of 13 different applications, but they all use the same user input patterns. For example, a warehouse operator has a scanner value, whether it is a storage bin, a delivery, a material, uh, he has a scanner value or enter a quantity, uh, for example, a quantity that he picks from a, a bin or he has to enter the weight or the dimensions of a handling unit, or he has to select one of the uh, possible options. So all 13 applications basically use the same screens. They just follow a different flow of, uh, of actions. So to really develop these applications quickly, we decided to create reusable components for each of those operations. We created a component to scan a value, uh, to enter a quantity, to uh, enter a weight or dimensions, and to select an option. And that, that allowed us to create applications really quickly. We just had to uh, use the right component in the right place and uh, enable the navigation between the screens. And uh, that would give us an application. So to create 13 different apps really quickly, we decided to uh, create a library. Here you have uh, just an example of the uh, custom control. So one of the controls is to scan uh, something, for example, a delivery in this case. Uh, another one is to enter a quantity. Um, and the other one is to choose one of the possible options, and another one is enter the dimensions of a box. So these are the reusable components, and with these components we created 13 different applications to uh, receive goods, to send goods, to transfer goods, to put away goods, uh, and so on. So um, how did we do this? Um, there's a web IDE template that you can use, which makes it really easy to create your library. It's just called SAP Fiori Library, pretty straightforward. And this gives you, if you uh, follow the wizard, this gives you the following structure uh, in your project. So uh, first of all, you have the source folder where you have the source code of your library. And then this follows a part of your namespace. And then in your, uh, in your library, you have a controls folder, which contains all your custom controls. In this example, I have one control, which is called hello UI5.com. Then there is a library.js file. This is the script that initially loads the library. So this is the first script that is executed when the library is referenced. Then you have a manifest file, which is a description file. And this is really important when you deploy this library, for example, to an on-premise system. This manifest file uh, is used to later reference to your library. So this <coughs> is important. And then you have a grunt file uh, to build the library, uh, also not uh, uh, also important. So the library.js, you don't really have to change anything to this. Uh, it contains the namespace of your library, and it contains an array uh, of all the controls available in your library. Uh, so it doesn't really uh, do a lot except to do a call of the init library uh, API. The manifest file, it contains also the namespace of your library, and in it uh, also says that this application is a library. And when you deploy the library to, for example, your on-premise environment, he will recognize that the, 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 the application that you are deploying is a library, and he will register this namespace uh, as a library. And then if you want to use it in an application later on, it's very easy to do so. I will show you how. Then you have the grunt file. Uh, initially, in the template, it already contains a couple of tasks uh, to build your library, uh, for example, to lint and minify your code. But it does not create a library preload.js by default. 
So you don't have a preload file by default, but you can easily add this by just adding a, a task, the OpenUI 5 preload tasks, which is a, a task that is available in the SAP Grunt uh, package. So you can use that package and that task to create a library preload um, file. OK, so it's really easy to create a library. Um, you just have to uh, develop the custom controls. That's the hard part. The library is not very difficult. Uh, but how do you consume it? So uh, yeah, you first build and deploy your library, for example, to an on-premise environment. And then you can add the library as a dependency of a consumer application. So in the manifest of the application uh, where you want to consume the library, you can add a dependency to your custom library. For example, uh, the one that I'm using here is the OpenUI 5 UI 5 con library. So you add it as a dependency. And then you can use custom controls in uh, your applications. For example, uh, a UI control, uh, which I'm uh, uh, putting in my uh, XML view. So you, refer you create an XML namespace, which points to your custom controls. And you can then use a control coming from that namespace in your XML view. OK, so that's all you have to do. So how does it work once you, when you deploy your application, you add it to your Fiori Launchpad, and you start it up? Uh, if you do so and you go to the network tab of Chrome, you will see that one of the requests when an application uh, in the Fiori Launchpad is started is the start up um, request. And if you have a look at the response that you get from there, you will see that it contains a JSON and it contains a lot of information about uh, the application and it also contains application dependencies. For example, you will find your uh, custom library here and you will also find the URL where that library is deployed. So basically, the Fiori Launchpad does everything for you. When you deploy the library, it will register uh, the URL where the library is deployed together with the namespace in the repository. And then when you reference to it in another application, it will automatically download the required files from that repository. So you don't really have to do anything. It's uh, pretty easy. OK. Um, so when you are running a standalone application, it's a little bit different. So now the Fiori Launchpad is handling the uh, downloading of the dependencies for us. If you are running a standalone application, then you will have to use the sap.ui.require API. You, have to will, you will have to do it yourself to load the, the files. And then, yeah, a couple of years ago, I already created a library, and it was really hard. I thought it would... It would there was a lot of overhead when you developed the library, and I found a cool feature in the Web IDE, and I'm just going to show it to you how it works. And this really uh, helps in uh, developing libraries. And I think, I don't know how long it exists, but it didn't exist a couple of years ago, so I think it's a pretty new feature. So I have my library here, which just contains one custom control. Uh, oh, sorry. No. Okay. This should work better. Okay, so I have my library here. So it just contains one custom control, hello UI5Con. I have the library.js and the manifest file, like I showed in the slides. Um, so I'm going to create an application that consumes that library. So I'll create a new project. I will use an SAP UI5 application. Uh, Call it like this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> takes a long time to generate a project. Okay, there we have it. <coughs> so I will do the steps that I described in the slides. So I will first add a reference to the library to the um, to the library in my manifest file. Uh, you can do it in a code editor or just use the graphical tool. We'll do it in the graphical tool now.
Uh, oh, I have to select library here and then enter the name. Okay, so this, uh, this declares this library as a dependency of the current application, and then I can use um, the UI controls, for example, in the XML view. So I will add a namespace. like this and then I will have to add controls to it because the UI controls are in the controls folder of the UI 5 con library so then I can use the control in my view and the name was hello UI 5 con I think and it has a text okay like this so if I start this application, it will not work because uh, this is in the web IDE, local development environment of the web IDE, and um, he will not know where to find the uh, UI5 library, the, uh, the custom library. So there is now a cool feature that I found somewhere in a blog. And uh, if you right click on your project and you say add reference to library, you can add a reference to a library in your workspace of your web IDE. And this is really cool because you can develop your library while you are developing your custom application. So you can develop them parallel. And you don't always have to deploy a change to your library before uh, seeing that change reflected in your application. So this really makes it a lot easier. So uh, here you say repository workspace. And he already finds uh, the library that is in my workspace. So I will just say include it. And then it will still not work. <laughs> you will still need to change <laughs> something. So in your run configuration, there is, I will run the index file. And there is a setting here saying, use my workspace first. So fir first, use my workspace to search for the dependencies. Uh, and then it will work. So if you click Save and Run now. It should work. Oh, I think there's a typo somewhere. Hello UI5 con with a capital C. Uh, there we go. We have the UI5 logo, which is my custom control. So, yeah, that's how uh, how easy it can be to uh, group your uh, components in a custom library. Any questions? Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>